Got it. Well, we want to welcome you, everybody. This is the Global Watch International Call. It is March 4th, 2024, 6 a.m. Jerusalem time. This hour is the journey, which is our weekly discipleship time. We are in the midst of going through the book by Alan Kirshner called Pre-Wrath, a very short introduction to the Great Tribulation, Rapture, and the Day of the Lord. And we are now, for this hour, we're going over part uh, the beginning of part two of the book. The first three chapters in this section are the Great Tribulation Cut Short, the Celestial Disturbance Event, and the Sixth Seal Signals Impending Wrath. And so it's, uh, it's great because these chapters are short, but they're filled with Great stuff. So let us have, um, let's have uh, Joe Hardwick. Why don't you open us up in prayer? Yes, thank you. Yes, Lord, we, we thank you that in this very important timeline that, Lord, you have prepared people to look into the scriptures and to help us understand some of the things which are difficult to understand but lord we just say thank you that we have your holy spirit inside us and that you can lead us step by step through the things we need to and especially lord we just pray for relationships between um, those of us who are on the global watch and with our families and with our church families at home lord to help them to understand things that that are being shown to us lord and I just say thank you, Lord, for the leadership that is um, leading us uh, step by step through this. And we just pray for this time now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Joe. Um, all right, Susan Rao, do you have any opening comments you want to make? Or do you want to just give us your highlights for what uh, what was what you felt like were the important points of these chapters? Well, I, I'd like to actually hear from others and just to like take a couple of minutes to hear from others um, how they've liked the uh, journey so far and any key points that they've gotten from this first. So wait a second. So not so that you're saying not. Uh, but no, I will. But I'd things. like to hear from others first on uh, how they've enjoyed the journey or how they've any key points they've taken out of the journey so far on this topic, the pre wath from beginning to now. Okay. Why don't you call on a couple of people? Mm. I don't want to do that. You okay. raise your hands if you've got something burning in your heart. <laughs> that can be a bit awkward. Okay. Valerie, go ahead. Valerie, good for you. I'm glad you stepped out of the boat. <laughs> we got to learn to do that, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I just I just wanted to say that I I love this book because I've been studying eschatology for the last two and a half years, and everything is so compact in here and put in ways that you know you can visualize that he's got the the maps <laughs> I call them maps he's got those up um, to see those but really brings clarity to a lot of the scripture. Um, and I like his manner that he doesn't, it isn't dogmatic. He isn't saying, this is the way it is. You need to, you need mm -hmm. to, you know, do it this way. Um, he said, you know, there's been others that have maybe said this or this, but I'm going to show you why I believe what I do. And then he does. And it's all very scriptural and I just appreciate it. So. Well, yeah. Valerie, that's exactly the kind of attitude and heart stance we're trying to foster here on the Global Watch. We're not dogmatic and we're not running around with hammers in our head. Yep. And so. Right, right. right. But I think the, it's very, it's also very good because we need to know what's coming. We need to know how to prepare. Yeah, we do. And to we be really able to do. Stand. So thank you for doing it. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's the heart cry for this yep. study. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Valerie. Go ahead, um, Marguerite. I'm loving the chart because, as I've said before, I, I grew up on the pre-trib rapture and, and a lot of what he said in today's reading, I, I went on. I didn't know where I was supposed to stop, so I went on to the end of the second section. 
But yeah. what he says in today's reading makes sense to me, lining it with up with what I've already been taught. I've just moved that chart along a little bit and I've just taken the dial of the rapture bit and slid it along to somewhere halfway through the second half. But it's making so much sense. Whereas what pre-rapture said, the um, those particular signs we got today in, in, in number six was a sign of him coming back for everybody else. Um, I can see it. I can really see it. And, and it's not scaring me at all when I'm saying to my friend, look, all this stuff that's happening, it's it's part of the deal. It's part mm. of seeing that we're on the on the clock to the to the wind up towards the end. Even what mm. you said last week, Sue, in one of the calls that you know you believe this is going to happen until Jesus comes back, maybe with a bit of quietness in between. But I can just see it, and I'm loving it. And and the bit that I liked today was um, we don't have to be scared when the world That's gets right. really frightened. We yep. can look up saying, you're That's coming, right. Lord. I'm not looking mm -hmm. forward to it, and I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for you. Mm -hmm. yep. And so we've got a message. And my yep. message still stands to those that believe in the pre-trib rapture. What Joel said that time, you, you prepare for the worst and hope for the best, and that shuts them up. They don't worry then. I say, look, we'll find out, but let's be ready. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's a great. That's a great attitude, I think. Uh, it keeps us in a place of humility, but um, but really seeking, uh, you know, seeking the Lord to be prepared. So good. Thank you, Marguerite. Okay, Kathy Colson, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you guys for hosting this. It's been amazing so far. I did, had, I did miss one session, but I really am trying to make them all. And what I wanted to say was I got saved during the late great planet Earth when it was going around Kathy <laughs> I did I got, too I did too <laughs> yeah and I got scared into the kingdom and <laughs> and um I mean you know at the time it was uh it was the thing to do and a lot of Christians were you know being affected by it and the Lord did use it but since that time I think I had kind of avoided the topic because of that particular uh, book and movie, it just it, it 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 stirred a lot of fear, and so um, it, you know, like when you get stirred up like that, you just tend to avoid it. And so um, for me, this is book is balance because it's not it's 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 telling you the truth, but it's presenting it in a way that it's like no, this is our moment. You know, this is our moment to shine. Yes. This, this is our moment to share. This is our moment. I mean, this is what it's all about. And so, yeah, so I just wanted to thank you for hosting it. It's 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 a great book, and this has been a great study. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. But it, oddly enough, uh, Hal Lindsay came to my college. <laughs> it must have been right after he wrote the book, and I got scared into the kingdom, too. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's exactly the, that's exactly what Sue said. Your your exact words, Kathy. That you get she, Susan gets scared into the kingdom. So I'm just I'm glad that however however the Lord wanted to do it, that you both are in the kingdom. And uh, uh, but now we're you know we're 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 coming at things from a more mature angle, and uh, not just kind of um, you know sensationalist, but that it's it's um, that it's. It's we're, you know, we're sober minded, we're in the end times, but we also have great hope. And, uh, and, you know, we don't, we don't have to know the exact moment that Jesus is going to return. And, uh, um, uh, and, you know, if we did, we, we might be, we might tend to be a little bit arrogant about it. And, uh, but this keeps us really, this keeps us on our toes. And, uh, but nevertheless, as we, as we see the signs and the things that are happening, um, that we can not go out in fear, but say, okay, this is exactly the way, you know, this is exactly the way the Bible, uh, you know, told us, that, you know, that Jesus told us this was going to happen. So it's very good. All right, Susan. So give us, give us your highlights. You always put me out first. Yeah, I know, because you, you, you're such a good teacher. Uh, I'm just a kind of a, you know, I like to uh, jump in. I'm a, I'm a jumper in her. <laughs> oh boy. Well, my comments are going to be very short. Um, this, the, what? I said, good. 
That's good. Yeah. Uh, more time for, for <laughs> the discussion. Less the better. Um, <clears throat> the first section was on um, about the uh, great, tribula great Tribulation cut short. And there's different views on this. Uh, and um, all of them I can agree with, basically, except for the pre-trib, um, uh, the pre-trib, what would you call it, eschatology. Um, I hope you hear our hearts on this. The reason why we're doing this is that m uh, much of the church is unprepared because they're in the pre-trib uh, type of uh, theology. And um, I say this with all gentleness. I, I, we love them and all of that, but our, I'm asking us, I feel like God is calling us to be messengers of his word. And uh, as we go through this, that we're coming out of this as messengers, we even had some stuff today at our church where um, we can do it with love and with, you know, not with a hammer in our hand, but have you, have you considered this or that, you know, my understanding is a little bit different than what the church is standing at right now, but <clears throat> that doesn't mean that we hate the church or we hate the people. That's not it. But my concern is that the church understands that we're going to be facing some tough times. And if we get all tangled up in offenses now, what's it going to be like when, you know, uh, the real weapons come after us? So um, uh, that's my heart. And I'm speaking to myself too. Don't get caught up in offenses right now because your hearing will go down and your stance will be cut off with the Lord. So, um, it won't be cut off, but it'll be hindered by the Lord, to the Lord. So that's, uh, we, we've got to gird ourselves up to get ready uh, for what's coming. That's what he's, the message of the first section is. Second se section, a, a phenomenal way of, dis, de, of articulating what celestial disturbances are going to be happening. Um, I had not equated those celestial uh, happenings in um, the seal six with the coming of day of the Lord and the splitting open of the heavens and Jesus coming back. So that was all a whole new concept to me, but it makes sense when I look through the seals, read the sixth seal and go on that that has something to do with the Jesus return. And I don't know if the plate seals and the trumpets are going to start playing out intermingling with each other. I don't know, but somewhere in the midst of that, Jesus will return and we will be raptured and it will be all in one event. It won't be two events. Um, <clears throat> and what I wanted to highlight to you was Matthew 24, 29 to 31. We'll be talking about this, I hope, more on these sessions. But that is the, that is the scripture to highlight, to speak about the to those who are caught up in the pre-trib rapture mode. And because it def I don't see anywhere how they can get around this, that immediately after the tribulation of those days, he talks about the celestial happenings and then the Son of Man will be coming. So um, that's just my take on this, Fred. I, I thought the two reactions, though, with the celestial happenings, they're very important. I had not seen that before. One is that people react in fear. The second thing is that we will look up and we will be praising the Lord and waiting for him. We'll have understanding. We'll have wisdom for the times. And that's why we are doing this watch. And many churches are not preparing their, their people yet. So my hope is that we will be messengers of this. And this, this will multiply and help stabilize much of what's going to be unstabilized <laughs> in the days ahead. Yep, very good, very good points. I'm just going to read um, one of the passages that he highlighted in here for people that didn't, maybe didn't, haven't, haven't read the stuff yet, so that we can just highlight what you just said. Um, and it's from <clears throat> Revelation 6, 12 to 17. <clears throat> then I looked when the Lamb opened the sixth seal, and a huge earthquake took place. The sun became as black as sackcloth made of hair, and the full moon became blood red, and the stars in the sky fell to the earth like a fig tree, dropping its unripe figs when shaken by a fierce wind. The sky was split apart like a scroll being rolled up, 
and every mountain and island was moved from its place. Then the kings of the earth, the very important people, the generals, the rich, the powerful, and everyone, slave and free, hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. They said to the mountains and to the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of the one who is seated on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb, because the great day of their wrath has come and who is able to withstand it? And um, it's a powerful passage and it's very important that we understand that uh, there's, again, there's, as you were highlighting, as he was highlighting in this chapters, that there's a very different reaction if you know the Lord and you know what's coming. Because when his wrath is about to come, that is when we are, are going to be raptured up. And uh, it's just, this is why in the Global Watch, it's so important for us to study the end times so that we can know how to interpret what it is that we're seeing, that we won't go out in fear, but we'll go out in, in, in boldness and confidence and hope, even though we'll be going through very difficult times. And uh, um, as I think Marguerite was saying earlier that, uh, you know, she's not in fear and, uh, yes. and, and we're that's, not in that's fear That's a big either. thing, Fred. It's this a huge thing. thing. It's a huge thing because fear is one of the enemy's weapons that he uses. And, he's, and we've seen it with COVID with all the anxiety that people have had. And I, I believe that the, the anxiety that's gonna be throughout the earth during this time is during the, you know, the, the great tribulation is gonna be way exceed what even happened in, in COVID. So, but we don't have to be in that, we don't have to be in that position. And we're called not to be as forerunners, as, as watchmen, we're called to, um, to share with people what's, what's going to happen and that, they turn to him, they need not be afraid. So um, that, that, was the, that was the main thing that I wanted to say. Let's go to, um, uh, let's go to Jenny Hager. Jenny, I always call on you because I want to hear your perspective. We might hear from one or two other people and then we're going to go into the uh, breakout rooms. We have a good question for you all. Go ahead, Jenny. Well, I've been taking notes as I'm reading through and asking the Lord for revelation. And interestingly, the other day I was getting the, the Christmas hymn, we sing it at Christmas, We Three Kings of Orient are, bearing gifts we traverse afar, field and fountain, moor and mountain, and following yonder star. O star of wonder, star of night, Start with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. And I was saying, Lord, why am I, are you trying to tell me something about Christmas? Or, you know, the way we do when we get something from the Lord and we're trying to, you know, what make out, what are you saying? What are you doing in this? So I didn't get anything. But then I sat down and read part two. And the interesting thing is Alan... Uh, Kushner reminds us of the first celestial sign to the first coming of Christ from Matthew 2.2, 2, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. And so I realized then that was why the Lord was giving me that hymn, um, because that was the first of the celestial sign. And and then, of course, he, he says the other celestial signs, uh, Revelation 6.13, stars in the sky fell to the earth like a fig tree, dropping its unripe figs when shaken by a fierce wind. So the celestial signs that go on, um, as he says, we don't, we don't know if some of it's earthquake, I mean, the massive tsunamis, the seas roaring, is it nuclear? What is, we don't know. But I feel the last part of that chorus was guide us to thy perfect light. And that's what I'm holding on to as we're reading through all of this. Oh, Jenny, that's, that's, really, uh, that's really amazing. The thing about, he described such in, um, incredible ways, articulated the celestial <laughs> things that we're going to be encountering. I was just reminded that you know, when we went for the Spirit of Elijah journey to Israel last April, 
Uh, the first team members landed, I think it was on April 16th. And you know what happened? A meteorite went through meteorite. Israel and it shook the entire nation. It went, from the, it went from south to north. And where did the attacks come there? South to north now. And I, you know, I don't want to super spiritualize anything, but it's like attention, attention. Some yeah. things are going to start to happen here. And uh, now it's like we see these things happening. And I'm really in a quandary as to how to pray, Lord. How do I pray? Because some of this is your footprint, removing things out of the way and uh, awakening Israel. It's, and you say, what the, you talk about what they're going to go through. And that's why we're, we are contending for these daily briefs, contending to connect with them and to be that company of people, of watchmen, of the Ruth company, however you want to look at it. Um, to support Israel because they're going to go through it. We are too, but especially Israel. I'm not sure that it's going to relent. Amen. All right. Um, let us hear from one other person. How about um, uh, Amy Winchester? Amy, how would you like to unmute yourself and just give a couple comments? Well, I think one of the things I, I felt pretty much, I, I too, I got saved just before I ran into the Great Lake Planet Earth. So I, um, I was saved in 1972. And uh, I did, I just thought, I'm putting this away. I don't want to read about it. Don't talk to me about it. And, um, but now with my nephew writing the book he wrote, he wrote a book about the end times based on the biblical timeline. And I thought he wanted me to read his transcript. And I said, so it's like the Lord said, you are going to start reading about this. And uh -huh. so getting into the word, it really drove me because he would keep bugging me. And I said, okay, okay. Um, but now it's reading this and I'm comparing it. I'm, I'm realizing I have to know because a few years ago, I began to realize, I think we're going through the tribulation. And so that's why I began watching films about Richard Vermbrand and people like that who've been persecuted severely for the faith because I thought, God, I don't want to be one of those people that rejects you. I think I would just, it would tear me apart. And um, I think that's where God is leading us. So I even bring that up in my Bible study with my nursing students. And I know people probably think I'm crazy, but I just thought, if this is so important, we've got to be prepared what is coming, you're not expecting this. And it's in the word, but you it's gonna be your relationship and the precious love that you have for the Lord that is what is gonna be, to, that will sustain you because that's what sustained Jesus to go to the cross. That's what's gonna sustain us to go to the cross as well. Yeah, amen, well said, well said. I think the whole issue about being prepared is to, this is what the Lord wants us to do. He and and he, you know, he's blessing us to do it. And I think that that uh, this watch is probably filled with people who uh, have just like not wanted to go there, not wanted to really get into it because it's complicated, it's difficult. How do you how do you figure it out? And uh, plus, it talks about you know negative things that are going to happen, difficult things. And so, uh, but when we but as we're trudging through this, trudging through this, um, uh, the more I under, feel like I understand things, the less fearful I am of, uh, of what's going to happen. And I, I, I think that's probably true for most of us. So let's, Susan, let's go to the, um, let's go to the breakout session now so we can all have a, a chance to comment on this. I'm going to put it in the, uh, I'm going to put it in the chat. So here's the breakout session. <clears throat> So these things, you know, we're we're in the end times now, and and we're we're learning about the things that are going to happen in the great tribulation, which are going to be even a lot more intense than what's going on right now. The question is this: How do we prepare, and how do we pray when we see these things happening? Things that particularly that are in His Word that we know are going to happen, sort of 
regardless of, you know, how we pray. But um, but there are things that the Lord wants us to pray, and there are things that He wants us to uh, prepare for. And um, just how do we do that? So um, there's no one right answer. Uh, just remember two things. Remember what room you're in, and pick a um, pick a spokesperson early on. Okay. No false okay. humility, please. Thank you very much. All right. Here we go. Let's go to the breakout sessions. Okay, you got it. All right. Uh, the king wanted everyone was to bow down um, to the idol, but they refused. Um, so it's hard, but um, being in a community, the three of them, um, they were able to um, to stand. And um, what they said was that they would be willing, um, um, that God will deliver them, but even if he doesn't, um, they will not bow down. So um, uh, we may see God's glory in those circumstances, the tribulations, but we, but we are prepared, but we need to be prepared to also um, that we may go through the pain of it, but um, be prepared now and pray for our faith to be strong, pray for um, to have an uh, unshakable commitment um, to him. Uh, when the time comes, you know, study those who have gone through persecution. I, I, Andrew's person's teaching was um, great um, for this. Um, yeah, so, so for us, we need to learn from those who have gone and experienced and were able to stand so that we can stand also when we're faced with the same situation. Yep, very good, Lana. Um, and and the, the being in community of however large or small is uh is just that was going to really help us uh in terms of our strength so excellent points all right let's go to room two room two spokesperson yeah that's me uh we we talked a lot so i can't remember all of it uh, even what i've written down is way too much so I'll just, and yeah just just give us points. one or two points lynn just give us quick, one or two quick points, points. So, uh, and a couple of scriptures too that were mentioned that you can read later, Isaiah 55 about grace and Isaiah 24 compared with Revelation 6. Okay. Um, right. Uh, we're not alone. Uh, we need to prepare those around us uh, so that they don't drag us down. Um, work through relationships, work through our own hearts. Uh, things that need dealing with there. Um, one person had a vision where they heard three words spoken, come back, step in, come into my word. Um, and so when looking at people, we need to look at them through the Lord's love. So we're talking about really about how we're dealing with other people, um, uh, recognising and what we see happening, recognising the real and the counterfeit so that we keep our eyes on what is true and real so that when the counterfeit comes, we know it, we recognise it. Um, making the most of every opportunity that we have. Uh, a couple of visions that I had um, when I saw what looked like a nuclear explosion, just remembering to look up that redemption was coming and another vision of um, hiding behind this big rock when there were all these other explosions and things happening and I knew that as long as I stayed in that rock who is Jesus of course that I would be safe and so um, yep and Margaret was about to say remember one thing and she didn't get to say what the one thing was so maybe she'd like to share that thank you yeah we, we don't I don't think we have time for everybody to share okay we no just, no no uh, one thing We've just, uh, doesn't have to be, uh, so your comments are great. I think we need to look at people through the Lord's love uh, is, this is always so very, very key. And that that's a, was a really key comment that you made. Thank you so much. Let's go to room three, room three spokesperson. Hi, I'm room three spokesperson. So we talked about, in terms of how to prepare, firstly, just evangelism to those who do not know um, Jesus. Um, or who have not heard the gospel in those times yet, but um, also for the body of Christ. Um, I mean, I, uh, we imagine that in those days, there'll be a lot, um, it can be perplexing and can be very offensive, the things that happen to the saints in those days. 
So firstly, like I think uh, what was mentioned earlier to be in community um, and like um, to, to, for those who are in understanding to prepare the others, uh, to prepare and to encourage everyone to, 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 to stand firm, to have endurance um, um, in, in the trials that will face the saints in those days that, um, that to bring scripture as a living word into their trials because they are uh, being um, that they're given a chance to share in the cross of Christ and um, to to speak Christ and to look at Christ in all these situations um, that that the saints will be faced with and when it comes to prayer to 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 truly listen to what the spirit is leading us to pray and to not be presumptuous as to what to pray for um, yeah that's what we had as a group. That's that's great. Thank you, Wen. I think um, the comment that you made about bringing scripture as a living word into their trials, this is really important that we understand that that God's word is powerful and it is uh, it is living and it's sharper than a double edged sword. And uh, this is this is something we can take with us constantly. So thank you very much. All right. Let's go to room four. Room four spokesperson. That's me. Um, some preparation points, being so close to him, abiding, sitting at his feet, eyes on him. Uh, someone said praying for the anointing that breaks the yoke. And this is going to be something that will be so necessary, not only for ourselves, but for others who are maybe caught in something. Um, how we need the manifestation of his power to be flowing through us now and always, particularly in the days to come. Uh, another one, another point was um, the strength of his grace that he abounds to us, that will abound to us and that we'll even be able to dance and be so free and rejoicing in him and what, what an incredible testimony that would be uh, in the tough times ahead. Beatitudes, that's somewhere where I've been in lately, um, Matthew 5. There are some points that can really prepare us as well. And um, his promises, just relying on his promises, for example, he, he promises to prepare his bride and that's us to be spotless so there are so many wonderful promises that we can be just standing on uh, another point last point um, paying the price regardless of the uh, the effort the price um, the hardship for example the ten virgins and the oil and um and needing to be continually filled, particularly knowing his word. His word is, is our mainstay and uh, we need to be match fit, not just today, but going forward more than ever than before. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Alison. You know, being close to the Lord, relying on his grace and on his promises, which, of course, are in his word which again, getting back to that, his word is living and active, so strong. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, room five, room five. Okay, I'll, okay. I'll share. Um, it was brought up that what's happened in Australia and Adelaide at the parliament already, the battle between pro-Palestinians and those standing for Israel and already facing it today. So for those of you who are in Australia, you've already known what it's like to be in that situation with loud sounds around you trying to take you out. So that's there. But the, the perseverance, uh, just take it to the Lord. And and uh, I think most consistently what I'm hearing is, is knowing the word and how we're going to apply the word. And what was also brought up is have discernment and how we share at the end times without scaring people to death, but speak love and truth and perfect love casts out fear. Um, and knowing the voice of the Father through this is in lines with the word is going to be so cool. But I guess for me personally, I'll just say, if we have the mind of Christ and, and the hope of Christ living in me, the hope of glory, uh, and, and so Christ is in us, 
and he's interceding for us. Why would we ever think we're going to be deserted and left alone? I'm just I'm just speaking out here. And so we got to we got to know who we are, where we are, where we belong in our identity, and quit living in the world's thoughts and thinking. I'm just saying. So I'll leave it at that, Fred. Yeah, that's good, Bob. And it's like <clears throat> I think Bob one of the one of the things that's so important about that is that that is a, that's a discipline. It's not a you know one time thing, and I've got it now. I'm good. But we have to keep going back to that because the enemy wants to come in and cause us to fear and cause us to get off track and distracted and and uh, you know confusion and all these things. And this is why we need we need to be disciplined about <clears throat> about being in His presence and being in His Word and being in community with each other so we can encourage right. each other. Amen. It's a daily yeah. issue. It's a daily issue. It it sure is. So great, great points. All right, room six. Spokesperson. Okay, room six. Um, just highlighting some things that have already been said. Referring to one have we really die to ourselves every day because ourself would lead us astray, but God will lead us in the perfect way. Um, the one who fears God doesn't have to fear man. So let us pray for the fear of the Lord who fears God, whom shall he fear else uh, worshiping because the right answers will come in time the specific answers for specific questions so let us worship let us be in his presence and let him flow the the answers to us and seek the kingdom first in our prayer so not put on ourselves praying for ourselves all the time but we have to pray for discernment and and anointing and all of this but let us seek the others um, for the others in our prayers yeah and listening to his voice hearing his voice listening to his voice let's pray for open ears and that we submit to the shepherd today if we hear his voice do not harden your hearts wow those are <clears throat> those are all great points Yannick um uh praying for the fear of the Lord I think is <laughs> is really key we have the fear of the Lord we won't have fear of man and uh, fear of the Lord it always keeps us in, it keeps us in a place of humility. And uh, so that's great, great stuff. Thank you so much. All right, let us go to room seven, room seven spokesperson. Room seven, you gotta unmute yourself. Go ahead, Brian, you took notes. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, learning to hear God's voice and to discern his his voice. Um, and also, I loved Katya's comment from Russia. It's only by grace we can be prepared, rely more on the Lord and on his grace. We prepare by getting close to him and loving the Lord. Um, and furthermore, we're, we're called to stand with the weak and call on God's strength. Um, we're preparing for going against the main tide of the day and do not grieve the heart of God in this. So there's a real relationship, heart-to-heart -heart relationships with the Lord and with one another. So good. Thank you so much, Brian discerning, uh, hearing God's voice, relying on his grace. Now, isn't, now, isn't this really cool that in, in a breakout session, we can have a Brian Green from New Zealand, a Carolyn Hyde from Israel, and a um, Katya from, uh, from uh, Russia, all talking together and uh, in, in the same breakout session. I mean, I just, I love this. You can't make this stuff up. It's so much fun. Thank yeah. you, Lord, that we can do this through Zoom, you know, from our own homes. No less. Uh, we're, we're seeing Isaiah 52, 8. We're seeing each other eye to eye. I'm telling you, who would have thought that this was possible, you know, 10 years ago? Not me, that's for sure. So, all right. So going on. Thank you, Brian. That was great. So let's go on to room eight. Room eight spokesperson. Yes, that would be me. Uh, the first question, how do we prepare? We prepare as God asks us to, whether that's physically, mentally, or spiritually. Uh, we prepare our heart and we walk by faith. 
Being on global watch gives us a heads up in that area. When all else fails, drink tea and carry on. <laughs> number, <laughs> number two, uh, how do we pray when we see these things happening that are in the word? We pray fervently and do what uh, his word says to do, look up. When things get tougher, hopefully people will be more open to hear of the hope that we have. Amen. From room eight. Great stuff. That's good. So when Susan, the next time that you're upset about something, I'm just going to say, Susan, just drink tea and carry on. And uh, <laughs> I think it'll be good. So thank you, Debbie. That was great. Great info. All right, let's go to room nine. Room nine spokesperson. So we were, I was in room nine, and so we had a lot of similar ideas, basically um, preparing by staying in the word and in re relationship with him, John 15, one through six, where it talks about abiding in the vine and listening for revelation from the Lord. So it requires us to be a student of his word. Uh, and so that in 1 Peter 3.15, we can give a reason for the hope that we have within us, because we're going to need that hope as the days come. And then uh, lastly, <laughs> that our focus is to be enraptured with him, rather than just focusing on the rapture, that we remember that uh, we are enraptured and, and our love is for him. And he shows us then how to talk with people, how to present the word, how to um, uh, just honor each other in our sharing so that we can um, be good disciples of his. So I think those are probably the, the basic things. That's great, Amy. Those are our, our basic, but they're so um, they're so key. And, and people have mm -hmm. have spoken about this in, in all the groups to some degree, staying in the word and abiding in him uh, uh, and the promises in John 15 about what will happen if you abide in him. You know, if we abide in him and his word abides in us, ask what you wish and it will be done for yeah. you. That's an That's unbelievable right. promise, John 15, Amen. 7. So thank you for that. It's great, great advice. Um, room 10 spokesperson, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. So God's been faithful in the past. He's taken us through so much already. Why would he change? So we grounded ourselves in that. He's not going to stop now. Uh, the other thing, uh, trust that when we get there, it was like COVID. We didn't know what to do. But when we got there, he showed us what to do. And he'll show us what to do as we're preparing here and all of the things that everybody said. He'll, he'll, he'll take us, he'll care for us right when we get to every point that we get to. Um, and the other thing is that uh, being together, occupying all of this, and um, he's got the whole world in his hands. Same old song, another little song. Remember that song. Put your faith in the fact that God's got this. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Trinda. God is faithful and he'll show us what to do so that we can't we can't anticipate every need that we'll have when the time comes, but he will show us what to do. He is faithful in that. So thank you. That's such great advice. Um, all right. Last but not least, room 11, room 11 spokesperson. This is Shanta and our room to prepare said to be intimate with the Lord, discipline ourselves, set time apart. And Global Watch brings us together to talk and to pray together and um, discuss the word and ask the Lord, what is our responsibility to be connected with them? He said he will never leave us nor forsake us. And the Holy Spirit of God is there to comfort, to lead us, and he will take care of his bride through the storm. Uh, was discussed. Then faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. The more we hear, our faith gets stronger. And they said that uh, in some countries and time uh, is not taught at all. So whatever we learn here, we try to share it with the pastor and encourage him to talk more about the end times. And um, uh, I think the Germany uh, it said that in Jerusalem, uh, uh, there's a house of prayer that believes that the Lord is coming soon. So connected with them, it encourages them. The people learn the most through tribulation and trials. And uh, when people see how we overcome, 
and we are able to overcome fear, it's such a testimony. They all want to know how we do it. So testimony is a great thing in these end times. So listening to the Holy Spirit to be led daily by him. And uh, most of all, that he, by trusting in him, he keeps us from fear. And this is a testimony. That's from our room. Oh, great stuff, Shanta. When people see how we overcome, it's a great testimony. That is so true. That's why we need to we need to be doing exactly what we're doing now in terms of preparing and talking about this with each other. So thank you. All right, that's all 11 rooms. Um, Susan Rao, we're going to go back to you for final comments, and then we're going to close. We're kind of over time here. Oh, great, great session, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, and I know that everybody's very busy, but the next, the, the 3 p.m. Jerusalem time watch, the next watch, uh, we're going to go uh, over the vision for the fight for sight, the spring initiatives, and try to lay out lay out a, um, what we see coming down the next couple of months. It looks awfully uh, intense and confusing when you look at it, but uh, hopefully by uh, speaking it out, we can make some order and sense out of what God is saying to us as watchmen. So that's coming up at 3 p.m. Jerusalem time. Okay. Very good. All right, Utah from Germany, would you like to unmute yourself and close us off in prayer? Yes, Lord, I thank you for I thank you for this amazing uh, family group, Father, for putting us together in such a time as this, Father, to steering us uh, uh, us up in faith, in the faith, in the truth, in yourself, Father, encouraging each other, Lord. Um, th thank you that you are ramping us up to stand in such a time as this, Father. And I thank you that you go further, Father. Thank you that every word, everything what is spoken, that it's sealed in, in, in our spirits, in our minds, Father, in our hearts, Father. And that you are building on that, building us up and walking together, Father. And thank you that you always give us your sight to see the victory in every battle and to know that in you we always have the victory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. Everybody, I'm Thank you. 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 Thank